whether it's been there. Now, a senior commander in the Syrian opposition army has told Sky News that Islamic State is still a very real threat, with up to 3,000 fighters hiding in the east of the country. Sky was given unique access to the controversial Turkish military-controlled buffer zone, where many ordinary Syrians have suffered life-changing injuries. The area is controversial. Nearly a year ago, Turkish troops moved 30 kilometres into Syrian territory and positioned troops along the border. The uh, Turkish authorities now want to persuade some of the four million refugees who fled Syria to return there. Our special correspondent Alex Crawford and cameraman Dan Morgan sent this report from the new base of the Syrian Opposition National Army in Al Bab. Abdul Rahman is as old as the Syrian war. <laughs> and his nine-year-old body's been torn apart by it, inside and out. He now has a new prosthetic leg, courtesy of the Turkish-built hospital inside the Turkish-controlled buffer zone of Syria. These are people weary of war. They want Syria back to themselves, but they want peace more. I don't want war, he says. I can't take it. Assad ruined everything. We want security. We want security. Everyone wants to go back to their hometown, she says. Whole families are affected. Even if, like 11-year-old Rena, you escape injury, she's had to learn how to cope with her father's wounds, as well as his anger and grief. He not only lost his leg, but also his arm and an eye, and she's had to grow up fast. May God punish Bashar al-Assad. He took my only son. I want to earn my own living from my own sweat. I don't want anyone's pity. It is tough on father and daughter, especially when you can't even hug each other properly. In Aleppo province, safety is a relative term. This is the buffer zone held by Syrian opposition troops, bolstered by the Turkish military. But the White Helmets are trawling this olive grove to find ordnance left behind when the regime dropped dozens of cluster bombs. This is a small crater where one of the cluster bombs exploded, and they're still finding many just scattered all over this field. This factory was one of the targets, and because this field was so close, it's still prone. They're still finding these cluster bombs and weapons and unexploded arsonry months, sometimes years after. Many of these men have picked up horribly mutilated children who found bombs which have detonated. Every time a child gets hurt, he says, I feel partially responsible. As civil defence, we have to work really hard to clean the land. It's our big responsibility. <laughs> Whilst we're in Al Bab, a town once overrun by ISIS and used as its base for attacks on Aleppo, we hear there's been a vehicle explosion. This constant instability in what's being called a safe zone is what's likely to deter people from returning here. We have terrorists here. They're ISIS terrorists and the separatist parties, the Kurds. They are doing this, causing all these attacks. It's the PKK and ISIS. And we have suffered from this for a long time. Since we were liberated until now, we're suffering from this. We're sending a message to the world to find a solution. <laughs> But the opposition forces want to show they're here to stay. This is their army's elite unit, the Al Hamza division. We were invited exclusively to see their brand new base. The Turkish flag is prominently displayed alongside the Syrian opposition one. Our guided tour is given by the commander, who is a defector from Assad's army. He was keen to press home they're no longer a ragtag group of civilians, nor extremists, as their critics claim. 
but a fighting force backed largely by Turkish funds and Turkish weaponry. And he warned, even if the West don't acknowledge it yet, ISIS is still a threat with new supporters. Our message to the international community is that ISIS still exists in the desert in East Syria under the protection of Bashar al-Assad and the Kurdish SDF. There are 3,000 ISIS fighters and they're not finished yet. The danger's not over and it won't finish unless you support us, the Syrian opposition, to finish off the Assad regime. At the edge of the buffer zone, they hold the line against Syrian regime forces with guns and sandbags sent by Turkey. The commanders are realist. They feel deserted by friends and any help is grabbed. How possible is it for you to hold on to any of these positions without the help of Turkey all over the place? We have no other choice. We either fight with what weapons we have or we die. Withdrawing is not an option. It doesn't exist in our dictionary. Our dictionary is revolution. We're continuing whatever happens. And Turkey is the only one with us on the ground, with weapons and military equipment. So they let the regime forces know that they're here holding them back with whatever help they can get. The price for that may only emerge later. Alex Crawford, Sky News, in Aleppo province, Syria. Coming up next on Sky